Hello everyone, welcome to Arcadian Atlas. I've been following this game on Twitter for what feels like years, and it's finally here, and the developers actually gave me a code for the game, which was quite cool. So, very, very excited to hop into this. I played the demo a bit ago. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what this is, it's very much like a Final Fantasy Tactics slash Tactics Ogre, or rather Tactics Ogre slash Final Fantasy Tactics inspired uh, kind of game, so. Very, very cool. I'm glad uh, indie developers and stuff are starting to work on these kinds of things because uh, this is definitely one of my favorite types of games, with Final Fantasy Tactics being one of my favorite games ever, and Tactics Ogre, which I recently played, being also amazing. Welcome to Arcadia, a land that never forgets. Built by forces more ancient and unsearchable than its soil. Ashes of forgotten wars are said to still live in the water, beating against its unforgiving shores. Its people fought for peace. And after many years, it came when the Dantelion throne in Tropus finally crushed Serob forces in the eastern land of Volan. Okay. Getting our initial map set up here. But peace is such a tenuous thing. A beloved king is now on his deathbed. A new wife hungers for his place. As Queen Absolute. The King's only remaining children have been declared illegitimate. The younger, barely old enough to wed. The elder, unwilling to serve any man. I'm liking this jazz! Ooh, 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 listen to this! One shall seek a life stolen from her. Awakening things so dark she could not hope to contain them. The other seeks a crown deprived her. Setting fire to the kingdom she hopes to win as her own. I like that like plague doctor looking class, that looked pretty cool. And caught in the midst of the flames. Our heroes. Okay, so... <clears throat> King died. Mommy's like, okay, I'm gonna be the queen. Automatically declares the heirs illegitimate. The heirs are younger and older. And the older one's pissed and is starting a war. And the younger one is dabbling in things that possibly she shouldn't be dabbling in. <laughs> so... Two lovers brought together by war, refined in peace, and threatened again as their country tears itself apart. But can love survive when nothing is as it seems and alliances crack against the fires? Let's find out! God, I loved that, uh, I loved that, uh, that sax going there. Oof, I love saxophones so much. This is Arcadia, born from the ashes. If you look hard enough, you can see the flames rise anew on the land that never forgets. Alright, let's work on making our Arcadian Atlas. This is the story of its burning. Alright, alright. Nice, nice, concise setup. Gets us into things and immediately throws us in. I like it, I like it. It's been so long since I played the demo that I don't really remember much from the demo. But, um... Like I said, I'm always down for any game like this. You also get a raccoon on your team in this game, I know. Named Poncho, I believe? A lady, the enemy draws near, it's nearly time. Yes, thank you, Yuri. 
So you're the older one, right? Ida, the time is nearly here. Take this. Poison dagger? They will not take me, milady. I assure you this. Please, Ida. If you do, they, you know what will happen to you. Neither of you have to do this, you know. We can find others. Oh, okay, so wait, that's not a dagger for killing somebody else. That's a dagger for killing yourself before you're captured? We will serve the cause with honor, milady. We will serve the cause with honor. Vashti, I believe you're our main character. There will be 100, maybe two, in three camps. Send your guard, send your ground, even if Wolf or Ellen should lead the charge. No matter what should happen, stand your ground. It will be done. I thank you. Though I can give you nothing else, I give you both my thanks. We will see you all again soon. Tell the rightful rule, my lady. Tell the rightful rule. Tell the rightful rule! <laughs> yes, sooner than you think. Okay, so we're like part of the rebel forces. And Ida, please look after her. This sweet thing is still green. She's right. There must be some things I can teach you before this fight. Uh, take Battle Basics tutorial? Uh, I'll take it. Excellent. Then start at, uh, then at the start of every battle is the troop placement phase. This is where you choose starting positions for your troops. You'll see a collection of blue tiles like these where you can place your units you want in the battle. You can place any troops on these tiles based on the number of remaining units deployable on the battlefield. The number of currently deployed, deployed troops will be on the right at the top, and the maximum deployable troops below that. Depending on the size of the battlefield and conditions of the fight, this number may be higher or lower. The status bar above me shows the current unit placeable. You can cycle through these troops to see basic stats and classes for all your troops. Cavalier, two-handed, speed, 12, type, human. Okay, so we can have like monsters or different races and stuff possibly. While well, you'll only be able to move yourself around for this fight, later battles give you more freedom in the truth placement, troop placement phase. Now we can talk about battles, starting with moving and acting during fights. Once a battle has begun, you'll see this, the directional menu, which is the central command menu for units. You'll notice four icons, the one on the left, the shoe, stands for movement. This allows units to get around the battlefield. Selecting this will display blue tiles, and hitting accept on a tile will move to it, based on your move set. Sword and rod uh, represents actions. Selecting this will display a list of actions that the unit can use. This is the list of actions available. Uh, a normal attack with the equipped main hand weapon will usually be the first option. You can learn new skills and see what they do later when you get access to the skill tree and troop management menu. You'll also notice each skill displays the required SP to cast or use it. Once those SP are depleted, you'll have to use alternate skills. Action and movement will be the most often used icons on the radio menu, but the other two are still important. This is the inspect option. It will display a list of details about the current unit, equipment, skills, stats, and status effects. You can also view the inspection panel of other units and enemies by navigating the cursor to them in battle and hitting accept. Yeah. Finally, we have the wait slash defend option. When you're finished with your turn, select this to designate where your unit faces. Try to face towards enemies as you sustain a penalty to evasion when enemies attack your flank or back. Yeah. Oh, and if you've used both movement and your action for that turn, wait slash defend will be chosen automatically for that unit. Mm-hmm. It covers the basics, but take some time to get familiar with the radio menu and battle flow during this fight. So, it is, um... Getting back attacked is just a hit to evasion. Um, I have played some of these games where you do actually do more damage when attacking from the back. But it seems like this is, uh, working like all Final Fantasy Tactics rules where you don't take extra damage. Or Tactics Ogre, rather. Alright. The enemy. Ready yourselves. The enemy approaches! Alright, so we're just going to be controlling, um... Vashti was our name's- our character's name? Am I crazy? Was that your name? Vashti. Yeah, yeah. Vashti and, uh, Ida. So, Vashti, despite being green, actually has higher attack. Um, you are a cavalier, two-handed, you have eight speed. So, Ida is much faster than me. 42 defense. 
Wait, all of my stats are higher except evasion and crit. Yeah, I'm guessing. I'm guessing just crit is. We have crit chance and crit, so I'm guessing crit is how much damage you do on a crit. Like it scales your crit damage up. And we also have cast times. Because we have crit percentage and also just like crit as a stat. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm guessing that's how much damage your crits do. Alright, well let's move you right here. And select my facing. That's fine. Alright, commence the fight. Yeah. I am playing this with controller. Um, it seems like it doesn't actually have a uh, weapon or uh, button prompts for um, controller, but I'm figuring it out. So, Rupert, you're a ranger. 67. Deja, you look like a war man. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're a war mancer. Oh my God. Bardish, nice name. Ooh. Apothecaries can throw, like, damaging things. Ah, you're also an apothecary. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's look at the enemies really quick here. Um, so, yeah. You are low health now, Brandy. You have a birch bow, linen tunic, wooden shoes. Wooden shoes? Ew. Don't like that. Yeah, ranger skills. Okay, and we do have, like, support skills, reaction skills, and all of that. Half plate iron helmet. Bethany. So you're a cavalier. I wonder if this is just the default portrait for like... Yeah, I think it is. For female cavaliers. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's get to work here. So, copper greatsword, iron helmet, reinforced iron armor, and a power ring. And it's your turn. So I do actually get to control you. So what skills do you have? Dowsing flask? Highly compressed flask of water that explodes on impact, delivering 55% damage and inflicting wet status on all caught in three squares, damage based on magic attack. 70% damage, 50% chance to inflict blind. Revives you a small amount of HP. Heals a very small amount of HP and increases... Ooh. Well, oh, that's interesting. Special concoction of all tome tiers that deals... Okay, can be modified with additional status ailments. Okay, um, you seem quite cool. I really, really like the sound of the Apothecary class in this game. It seems like it has some really, really cool stuff. Uh... Okay, that might not have been the best spot for you. I was kind of hoping I could get an attack off, but... 28? So that was like an ice arrow, yeah? Boom. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Uh, alright, so... You have Adrenaline Rush, Furious Attack, dealing 135% damage and ignoring some target's evasion. They're reducing your own defense by 30%. Powerful Swing with the whole body. Up to three tiles away, and you have a chance of inflicting stun. Attack, uh, using an enemy's defense against them, hitting a target for against high defense units, though weaker against high magic defense units. And smash sword into the ground, dealing earth elemental damage to units in the tile square in front of the cavalier. Fails against flying enemies. Interesting. Okay, yeah, we have some we have some pretty cool skills here. Um, I specifically like the thing that's useful against uh, enemies that have high defense. That's a neat skill. Alright, Dante. It's fire arrow. Uh-oh. Are you doing basically, like, charging? I'm imagining that's what you're doing. So what's that down? Your... Is that your defense down? Possibly. 46 on you. I wish, um, I wish it popped up and showed me their HP when they were getting attacked. Like, the target that's actually getting hit. I wish it would show me their, uh, their, like, HP amount. I do love that, the look at that, uh, the male apothecary class right there. Looks quite cool. Alright, so... Um... Let's see, dowsing flask, flashbang... 
I could do this, but I will hit one of my own characters. Hmm. And you're already kind of low HP, Victoria. So I don't think I want to do that. I think I'll just hit you with a Volatile Flask. Um, you are facing me, so this is going to have a lower chance of actually hitting, but if it hits, it will kill. There we go. Nice. That looks good. Okay. Big damage. Yeah, we're kind of annihilating them right now. Okay. And... You. Can I, uh, turn the camera at all? Like the, the little wah 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 thing that happens in, uh, tactics? Doesn't look like it. So, what are you currently doing? What is this? Vital shot. Minus two speed, one turn. So that's the status effect you put on yourself. Okay. Alright, um, body rush, reducing on targets, uh, reduces my damage. Yeah, we'll do, um, Adrenaline Strike. Good job. Okay, yeah, I'm liking this so far. Ow, double shot. Like I said, I do wish, um, that the enemy that was actually being attacked, I wish their HP came up when they were being shot. So I could have a good idea of what everyone's current HPs are. But, uh, it's fine. Might be a setting you can turn on or something. Yay. Continue. But yeah, like in Tactics uh, Ogre and stuff, like when you attack, it shows your HP and stats, and then it shows the enemy's HP and stats. So, it's helpful for keeping track of uh, everyone's HP and all that. Oh god! That's a lot of arrows. Hey, wolf. The... the wolf. Vashti and Edda. I see Lucretia sends you to run her fool's errand, then. <laughs> Vashti's face. Truly is a shame. Warned Desmond this would end with you dead, but I'm glad he wasn't here to see you like this. A mangy dog lying destitute in the dirt. Don't worry, I'll put you down quickly. I owe him that at least. Huh. What? Gods be damned, you're not Vashti. That was quite the reveal. Okay, our wig fell off. You're even more disgraceful than that traitor, a disgusting cur scrounging about for scraps from her master's table. <laughs> Rip. The only dog I see is you, Wolf, tamed to eat from Venetia's outstretched hand and carry out her every whim. No, Ida, you're cool. At least we're still wild. Sir, the forest. It it's on fire. What? Gracia, you cunning little fox. Fall back. Everyone fall back to camp. Hey, we don't lose Ada. Times have changed. You're so-called queen, haven't they? Kratia burning a forest and her people just to save her own skin. You know nothing of Lucretia and less of us, you bastard. Believe me, Ada, I know plenty of you. We both have our little secrets, don't we? A shame yours die here. Ada, no! You had such a cool design! I loved your hair! No. Okay, so we weren't even actually playing as our main character there. Well, whoever that character was, they still had pretty good stats, I mean... <laughs> Lahore Ruins. And here's our other main character, right? The one that's in love with Vashti? Flowers! How sad. They're wilting. 
a uh, bit symbolic, isn't it? I wish it weren't this. And when exactly were you planning to tell me she'd burn the whole forest before or after I went through it? It was meticulously planned, controlled to the tiniest detail. I knew you'd be fine or I'd never have allowed it. And Ida, did you count on her being fine? <sighs> what? Ida, something happened to her. Wolf happened to her. Her whole regiment fell in that forest. That monster. You better not have laid a finger on her. Is he the monster or the woman you fight for, sending Ida into that forest knowing full well it's burning around her? I don't fight for Lucretia any more than you fight for Wolf. We're fighting for ideas, Des. And we'd better make damn sure their ideas worth fighting for. Our friends are falling on their swords for ideas. So you two are actually on separate sides of the of the war. I forget if that detail was mentioned earlier or not, but that's interesting. Ida. Des, how did we get here? I didn't want any of this, you know that. Fortunately, this is all too common in war, where people that know each other, love each other, family, etc. are on different sides of the war, just because of how the pieces fall. You did, Vash. We both did. When we chose sides, we asked for this. Then why did you call me here? I wanted to see you again. To tell you we march on Lucretia's outpost in Rodham Hills tomorrow. Doesn't matter. We abandoned Rodham weeks ago, but something tells me you knew that already. Go east, Vash. Leave this war and go east. I can't. You know that, Des. It's the last time we can meet like this. Lucretia's becoming suspicious. And Des, about Ida, I hope you're wrong. But if not, I'm sorry. Sorry won't make these ruins a city again, Vash. But for what it's worth, I hope I'm wrong too. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the, the common people get caught up in the whims of, uh, the nobility and stuff as far, it, it usually is how these things go. I mean, a lot of the people fighting in these things don't actually want to fight, or they're just just being lied to for, like, propaganda's sake and stuff like that, so... And please, just stay alive. No matter what it takes, stay alive. Alright. Cool. Save my game! I'll do that. Dantalion. Playtime, 22 minutes. Level 3, Unit 6. There we go. Alright. Let's continue. So yeah, I think I've figured out the, um... Controller... Con the button mappings for this. Enter is like start and... Confirm is A and stuff like that. The Desperate and Downtrodden. Alrighty, Lego. Two years earlier. Uh huh. We we're starting a little early. There you are. I've done what I can, Your Majesty, but the fever is worse, and none of the poultices are strong enough. But can but he can recover. He might, with rest. Don't spare her because it's her husband. Will he recover? No. He has two weeks, three at most. Use every poultice, every herb. I don't care what it takes. Do everything you can. Do you understand me? 
Shall be done, your majesty. Your majesty, about Annalise. Ooh. I'll find the apothecary. We need proof. A bottle of poison, powdered adder rot, anything. What shall we do, milady? Hold them off. I need time. But if we can prove she's killing him, this kingdom will be set right. Waltzing into the viper's nest, not the smartest move, Lucretia, and so poorly disguised. Your father would be disappointed. My father and your king, lest you forget, would be... Pr uh... My father and your king, lest you forget, would be proud, you fool. I like Lucretia's design. Wolf very much reminds me of, like, Gefgarion. And when I prove this pretender on my throne has been poisoning him, we'll see who's in the viper's nest. Take up arms, quickly. Alright. This is my, uh... This is my, like, uh... Chapel battle. Beginning of, uh... Final Fantasy Tactics. Unit placements. Okay, so... And so we have you, Esmer, Nave, Santiago, Warmancer. That is a big Ram Skull. Vashti, Desmond. So here we're actually both fighting together. And you're actually one-handed cavalier now. Before you were a two-handed cavalier. And then uh, we also have Ida as well. Okay. Well, um, we can place five units. So let's definitely place you. Um, let's definitely place you. And... Warmancer... I feel like I definitely want the ranger. And probably the Warmancer. And then, uh, probably Ida as well. There we go. Those are my five units. I'm cool with that. Commence fight. Let's go! Battle conditions defeat all enemies. Let's go. Alright, so let's see what we're dealing with here. I do like this music a whole lot. God, a good saxophone. This is some good battle music. Wood hammer. Interesting, you're using a hammer. I can't see, like, the stats of the hammer, any specialties or anything about it. You're using a rod. And you're using a wood sword. Really? You're attacking the throne room armed with a wooden <laughs> sword. <laughs> Seems, uh... Ill-advised, if you ask me. Um, arrow, rain, basic attack. Okay. Mm. And we can move back if uh, I find out. Yeah, I don't want to go that far. Because you would have been able to hit me. Okay, my warm answer. So, what kind of actions do you have? Fireball. Shoot a ball of pure flame at a target, dealing 85% fire elemental damage with a 5% chance to inflict burning. Potent against noxious. Ah, so we're working on, like, the the logic that a lot of games, like, I've seen a bunch of CRPGs and stuff, like, Divinity Original Sin does this and stuff, where poison is specifically, like, flammable. So, if someone's as noxious, which I'm guessing is, like, poison, then they'll, like, explode, basically. So that's neat. All right. I like when everything kind of comes together like that. Fireball. There we go. All right. Uh, you. So can we restore SP? I wonder how restoring SP works. Um. We also in that battle I was just in. It was kind of doing the thing where we got a hint at just how powerful we would become as time went on, basically. Uh, because our characters are definitely weaker now. Um... Oh, that's interesting. So you can just press on the, the D-pad, like, to choose which one of these things you want to do. Rather than press the direction in, 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 like, A, you can just press the button twice. That's neat. Alright, um, a volatile flask on you. Yeah, you can definitely see how little damage we're doing comparatively now to how much we were doing before. Ice? How dare. But yeah, I've followed the um, development of this game for like... such an incredibly long time. That was the support flask. 
Um, like, I think this is one of the first developers I ever followed on Twitter, actually. Um, and I've just been following the development of this for what feels like forever. So, it's so nice to actually be playing the game and see it released. Um, so, Rind Armor... Yeah, no, definitely not that. Sword Bash, though? I could hit both of them. Or I could just do a basic attack on you and do 40 damage. I think I'll hit both of them. There we go. Some nice AoE damage in there. Alright, Vashti. Um, that Ranger did get healed a little bit, so let's go ahead and get in here. Uh, apparently... That was weird. Apparently, um, my, uh, my little, uh, whatchamacallit popped up there. My, uh, my removable drive. I don't know why it popped up, but whatever. Quick attack. Attack twice in a turn on to the same target with 55% damage per strike, so you do a little bit extra damage there. Hunker down. Protecting Cavalier and all allies in a two-tile rectangle with plus 20% evasion, or 20 evasion bonus. That persists for one turn. Clears limp and fracture status from all allies in the area. Ooh, that's really good. Okay, um... I can finish you off, it seems. So it shows me how much extra damage it does. This quick attack's gonna do a three extra damage, which... Honestly isn't really gonna make that much of a difference. I just want to see though. Yeah, so it does it does calculate the damage there. Good to know. I've noticed it's saying they're like unspecialized and stuff, so I'm guessing we specialized in like two-handed weapons or single-handed weapons, like in um Tactics Ogre. So Arrow Brain. Three tile radius dealing 50% damage to all caught within. Um I could hit multiple targets with that. Oh, wait, that's huge. Wait, that's bigger than I thought. Um, if we move right here, and then I do this. Yeah, that'll kill you and also hit those other characters. Beautiful. That's a very good skill. All right, um, let's move. So I hope this doesn't work like it does in Tactics Ogre, where bodies will stop projectiles from hitting. Okay, it seems like that's not the case. Good. <laughs> that was one of the roughest things to deal with in um, Tactics Ogre was like, I understand my characters that are standing up currently blocking it, but even like corpses would block attacks. So it seems like that's not the case. Good. All right, and... Ada? Let's see, um... You can throw that over. Yeah, I mean, I might as well take out, um, the Apothecary first. Okay, we can see who's going next down there, so... Desmond's turn is coming up. The Warmancer's gonna get an action, which Desmond will just be able to chase down. You're dropping the... that's the support flask again. So... If I inspect... Now... Support flask. So... That is unfortunate. I can see what their skills... Like their support, reaction, move skill and stuff that they have currently equipped is. But I can't actually see what their skills are and what they do. Which uh, makes sense. I just have to know... Okay, well that's... They probably have access to Warmancer skills. So... That's something to consider. I can see what equip skills they currently have, but I can't, like, look at what all the Warmancer skills are. I just have to familiarize myself with what... what they are. Um, so... I guess there's not a whole lot of reason... in doing that. Let's go right here. And let's do the Sword Bash again. To hit both of them. And you can quick attack. Um, let's see here. Can you get to this character? You can. Now, quick attack will probably kill you. Not quite, actually. I assumed you would have a way lower defense than this character. 
But we do the same damage no matter what. Hmm. Okay, I'll just uh I'll just quick attack you. There you go. Pretty low. God, do, that little crouch with the cloak makes just makes me think of tactics so much because it, it looks like when knights when knights are crouching. Um Okay. I mean I could just shoot you in the back. Might as well just go ahead and finish you off. God, you do big damage. Um Okay. Let's go fireball this jackass. Fireball. Combat's pretty quick though. I do like that about it. It's very it's very snappy and fast. I like that quite a bit. Let's see, volatile flask. Like there's not a lot of uh, slowness to the combat. It's very very, very responsive and very, very quick. The menu is very intuitive and makes sense to me. And the fact that you can just press a direction twice to choose your selected command is um, very, very nice as well. Makes it just go uh, that much faster, so. It's cool. I'm really, really liking this. Hey, I got worn iron armor and 5,000... It looks like an A. What are they, Ar Arcadia's? 5,000 Arcadia's. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it that for now. <laughs> Maybe it's called like Ark or something like that. I'm just gonna call it 5,000 Arcadia's. Arcadia Bucks. The last of them. Hello. My father is dying because of that apothecary, you traitor, and now I have the proof I need. Huh. Proof? Some putrid slop you extracted from a chamber pot? Don't make me laugh. Laugh all you want, but soon the world will know the truth. You've been poisoning your king. <gasps> Sister, you've come for me? Oh, thank the gods. They want to send me away to Letha. Yeah, you're the younger one. We just dropped the... What... What have you done, Annalise? <laughs> you, you grabbed me and now we dropped the proof! Annalise, you fool! Get back. <gasps> Sorry, sister, I'll come for you. I'll find a way once I'm queen, but you must be strong. Don't bother following me, Wolf. Your guards aren't as loyal as you may think. Interesting. So you, like, kind of took your sister as a hostage, basically. Just so you could whisper to her. And you're waiting for what exactly? Follow her now! Hm. You still love your traitor of a sister, do you? Even after that? I want her gone. Tomorrow you'll escort Annalise to Cairn Monastery and leave her there till Lucretia's dealt with. Do I make myself plain? Annalise, won't the king object to his daughter's exile? King Turgon is all but dead. Every day she's here, we're harboring an imminent threat to the queen's life. She shall live. That alone is a mercy. Give her safe passage through Amblemere and let me know when it is finished. Yes, your majesty. You'll need soldiers. Conscript some, conscript some troops for the trip at the recruitment center. Outfit them with whatever items you see fit. Etta, Desmond and I will take care of it. Good. And impress on this child what happens to those who commit treason against the crown. So, we must very quickly realize they're super assholes. Because, uh, yeah, we're on the opposite side soon. And Wolf, take this to have it tested. If it is indeed poison, I'll have that apothecary, apothecary worm flayed alive. Mm -hmm. If you insist. Are you just acting like you, you're not doing it? Because I'm definitely under the impression that you are totally poisoning the king. <laughs> you now access the item shop, recruiter, and tavern from Blue Nodes on the world map. 
Recruit and rename units from the recruiter and equip your units with the latest equipment at the item shop. More at the uh, tavern will unlock later in the story. From the world map, you can also access troop management to learn new skills, change equipment, and more. Tutorials and compendiums are also available with a host of information. Progress the story, go to the closest red node. Okay. Loading screen. Look at Vashti and Desmond. All right. And we have 5,000 Ar 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 Arcadians. What does that say? What does that say? Oh, I thought, this, I thought that said the waiting room. Wait ruins. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Okay. It's just the waiting room for the main story. All right. So let me know if you see something you like. Excuse me? A, a, a lizard runs this? Okay, exit. For now. Um... Uh, let's see, troop management. So... We have all the troops that we had here. Okay. Yeah, so, so the basics. We got Nev. I didn't use the Cavalier, and I don't see much reason to, considering we already have two Cavaliers. Um... Unspecialized. Path of Flame. Okay, so skills. Um, skill tree? Aha! Here we go. So, we have two class points. Ranger is able to ignore five enemy evasion when targeting them, increasing the accuracy of shots while equipped. Okay, and that goes into a support skill slot. Okay. Increases the Ranger's evasion by plus three against incoming attacks. That's pretty cool. 80% damage with a 30% chance to inflict silence on the target to prevent further spell casting. That's quite good. Coated in poison that inflicts noxious and deals 70% noxious element damage. Potent against burning or fire elemental foes. Fire arrow, 80% fire element damage and inflict burning. Ice and inflicts slow against, against units with wet. And uh, shoot an arrow coated in water that inflicts wet and deals 80% damage and nullifies burning. Slow is quite good, um, if I had both of those. Then you have Bow's Mastery. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's good, though. That's good stuff. Um... And that costs two class points. Um, I think I want to work on this. Because having the ability to slow people... This, this ranger is automatically more interesting than, um, the, uh, archer classes in, like, tactics, for example, because they just, they didn't have access to a lot of interesting things. Like, charge is kind of... whatever. Um, so... Alright, um, and I don't need to equip that specifically, because it's not a thing that I need to equip. So, you have three CP. SP reserves expand, increasing max XP, SP by three. Having practiced their spells endlessly, the Warmaster is able to cast faster than normal. Plus two cast. Once per battle, the Warmaster creates a shield of energy that adds plus 15 HP temporarily to their max HP pool for five turns. Do I get to choose when this happens? I guess so, because it's a skill, right? Each time the Warmancer is hit with a single target magic skill, increase magic defense plus one. When hit with a single target weapon skill, increase magic attack plus two for three turns while equipped. Rooted casting. Root yourself to elemental energies, decreasing minus one move distance in order to increase cast speed. That's quite cool. Um, and you currently have Fireball. And what is this? Create a wall of flame and a three-tile cross, dealing with 10% chance to inflict burning and leaves a trap that persists for two turns. Potence against noxious status. That's quite cool. Okay, yeah, I like these quite a bit. Um, well, currently we don't really have to take time to cast anyway. Um, I think I want to increase the damage of Fireball. And Fireball again. And increases critical damage by 5% from living too long amongst the flames. And Warmancer has become one with the flame, rendering them immune. Uh-huh. Do I have to get this first? Yeah, I have to get this first. Uh, increases fire damage by 105% increases fire resistance. Yes. Good job, Santiago. Alright, you. Tactical movement training increases speed plus one while equipped. Not move. 
just speed. That's kind of useful. Increased performance training, extra HP. With each sword strike, Cavalier has a 5% chance to inflict a limp. Cavalier has a 5% chance to inflict fracture. Increases defense plus one each time the Cavalier is hit with a melee skill. Ooh, that's pretty good. Vertical jump distance, practice the art of quick reflexes and armor. Can make you an evasion tank. Twinkle toes! <laughs> okay. Um, intense training increases attack by two while using a one-handed sword. While a shield is equipped, requires shield equipped. All units of five tile cross in front of Cavalier against all units. Oh yeah, AoE attack. I do like the idea of turning Vashti into like a tank. That seems fun, and it seems like what she's already leaning into anyway, considering she already has shield triage. So... 50% damage with 20% chance to inflict sun and gain 5 for every... for one turn from having shield at the ready. Let's get shield bash. And then... we can upgrade shield bash. I like the sound of that. Cool. So you don't currently have... Um, you I will make more into a damage character though. So you have... So limp, fracture, defensive, high jump, twinkle toes. Um, what else you got? Rend armor, that's very good. Defense plus two. That's quite good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna upgrade this. And I'm gonna upgrade rend armor. Cause I like both of those. Of course, getting some char getting my character some support kill skills is probably a good call. Um, so... Let's see... Crisis mode? Increases move by one due to the apothecary's sense of urgency when equipped. Yes. Absolutely. Movement is incredibly important in these games. So, let's go ahead and put that on. Good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Very, very happy with this. Cool. So, yeah, everybody's set up with their stuff. Um, now I can go in and actually grab stuff. So you do have a shield. Um, you have a rough brigandine. Uh, can I give you the iron armor that I got? I can't, probably because you can only wear light armor. Alright, let's go, let's go outfit, people. Um, I could go to the recruiter as well, but... Let's see what they have at the recruiter, I guess. What do they got? Recruit, rename. Good to see you again. Let me know if I can uh, help you with anything. Ooh, respect training. Ah, okay. Choose a new starting class and regain all CP for Vashti, keeping her current level. Don't forget to reinvest CP into new skills. So, yeah, alright. Add hints about the type of units you'll encounter and other strategically useful details to contract missions. Reduces all item shop costs by 5%, giving you a discount on all equipment and items purchased. Increase all item shop sell prices, giving you more money. Reduces the cost to recruit a new unit by 10%, reduces the cost to rename a unit. Received 1,000 Arcadian. It is called Arcadian to spend towards new conscripts. Received one light boots and one wooden shoes to equip on the unit's accessory slot. Increased traversal options. Receive one power ring and one channeling ring. Interesting, interesting. Alright. Very, very interesting. Okay. Uh... So we can get some things, or I can just get discounts. I think I want the item shop discount. 5% discount? Let's do that. So we have like a medal. So I'm guessing this is based off of how many battles we do, we can get these. Interesting. That's neat. That's neat to see. Um, I didn't actually recruit anybody, or look even look into recruiting anybody. Um, Probably do that. So, recruit. Um, Warmancer. Okay, so... Yeah. 
about what you'd expect. Just the just the basic classes that we currently have access to. Um, alrighty. So now let's go to the item shop. All right, outfitter. Now the question is, um, aha, cool. So we they they do have this. So linen tunic increases my stuff. There. Okay, this is quite useful. Good, good, good. Well, I definitely want that for you. The boots just improve your jump, which I'm less crazy about. Let's let's make sure we get everybody. Ooh, crossbow. What's the difference between these two? Saying J for item details. Here we go. Back would be J. So s wood crossbow, six tile range, can't target adjacent units. Fast cast speed. Crossbow that has been made of cheaply sourced wood, but at least the wood was ethically sourced, so that's something. Tag, target defense, plus magic defense, divided by two. Ranger and Hunter. So this is less damage than the Driftwood Crossbow. Oh, it has more range. And its attack multiplier is actually, its damage calculation is actually higher. So it does, it has a lower base stat, but its damage calculation is higher? Interesting. Cause yeah, it's, it's damage calculation, calculation is attack times 2.8. So it is better, even though the stat goes down there. I'm willing to bet that would confuse some people if they didn't look at the details there. And yeah, it does have an extra range too. Well, I definitely want that. Yes. Uh-huh. Alright, you. Can't get anything there. You can get a linen robe. Sure. I don't care about boots for you. There you are. Okay, I can give you a longsword, but I don't care to. Half-plated um, iron helmet, yes. Light boots, uh-huh. Everything's looking good there. Desmond, half-plate iron helmet. And Ida, you have a wooden hammer. And you can have a weathered helm. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's all good. Um, I don't know how many characters I'm going to be able to send into a lot of these battles, so I'm going to hold off on these these few here. But, um... Looks like we have enough to give most people... Let's give you some light boots. I wanted to see how much money we needed. You can have the light boots. And you can have the light boots. Um, the mages don't need to move as far, so I'm not going to worry about giving it to them. Let's save a little bit of the rest of my money. Alright, so what else do we got? Items to buy, or...? Oh. Okay, consumable items aren't a thing at all. I guess that makes sense, yeah. Okay. I'm out of here then. Well then. Uh, I think that's probably a good spot to go ahead and end the first episode of Arcadian Atlas off. This is, uh, pretty cool. I'm definitely, definitely liking this so far. So, hope you've enjoyed. And thanks again to the developers for, uh, sending me a code for the game, because I was going to play it anyway, so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for some more.